So when we introduced enzymes, we said that what enzymes do is they catalyze, they speed up the rates of reactions. And the way that they speed up the rates of reactions is by decreasing the energy of the transition state. So in that particular reaction that the enzyme catalyzes, once that substrate is inside the active site, when the reaction takes place inside the active site, what the active site does is it stabilizes the transition state and decreases the energy of that transition state. And that's exactly what lowers the activation energy, the Gibbs energy of activation. So enzymes catalyze reactions by stabilizing the transition state within that particular reaction. And remember, transition states are these structures that are so high in energy that they exist only for a very short period of time. So in that energy diagram, the transition state is the topmost portion of that energy diagram. Now, previously, we discussed different types of enzyme inhibitors. And we said that a very good enzyme inhibitor is an inhibitor that resembles the structure of that substrate. So if the inhibitor of some particular enzyme resembles the structure of the substrate that binds into the active site of the enzyme, then what that inhibitor can do is because it has a similar shape to the substrate, it can easily accommodate itself into that structure of the active site. So we previously saw that a good way to inhibit the activity and the functionality of enzymes is to create an inhibitor that resembles that natural substrate of that particular enzyme. Now, because of the argument that we just mentioned earlier, so since enzymes, active sites, essentially stabilize the structure of the transition state, then that must imply that a much more effective and a much better inhibitor of an enzyme would be an inhibitor that resembles not the structure of the substrate, but rather the structure of that transition state. And these types of inhibitors are known as transition state analogs or transition state inhibitors. So we see that these transition state analogs are molecules that resemble the structure of the transition state. And because enzymes ultimately stabilize the energy in the structure of the transition state, these are very, very potent, very effective inhibitors. So let's take a look at two examples. So let's begin by examining an enzyme found in bacterial cells known as proline racemase. And proline racemase basically catalyzes the transformation, the isomerization reaction of L-proline into D-proline. Now, the difference between L-proline and D-proline lies in the stereochemistry of this carbon. On this particular molecule, the H atom points into the board, but in this particular case, the H atom is coming out of the board. And so that's the difference between L-proline and D-proline. And proline racemase basically catalyzes the transformation of these two molecules back and forth. Now, if we examine the transition state when going from L-proline to D-proline, this is what we see. This is the structure of that high energy transition state. And notice that in this transition state, this carbon atom has planar, so is trigonal planar. And what that means is these three bonds, so this covalent bond, this covalent bond, and this covalent bond all lie along the same plane. And that's what we mean by trigonal planarity. So there is trigonal planarity within this molecule. And what that means is so if the H atom is added on the top side, we basically form this D-proline. But if the H atom is added from the bottom side, we're going to form that L-proline. So from the discussion above, if we can somehow build a molecule that is a transition state analog that resembles the structure of this particular molecule, then that means that transition state analog will be a very potent inhibitor of this enzyme, the proline racemase, because that transition analog, that transition state analog will be able to accommodate quite easily into the active side of that enzyme. So once again, the transition state of this reaction, this, uh, the isomerization of l -proline 
proline into D proline contains an alpha carbon that has planar or trigonal planar that is trigonal planar and it turns out that if we use a molecule known as parole 2 carboxylic acid which basically also contains trigonal planarity on that carbon as seen in the following diagram then this will be a very very potent inhibitor and this is in fact a transition state analog for this enzyme. So let's take a look at parole 2 carboxylic acid and compare the structure to the transition state of this particular reaction. So notice this carbon has trigonal planarity and so does this carbon. So because we have this double bond, that means these three bonds will all lie along the same exact plane. And so these two molecules in fact resemble one another much more than this molecule resembles that substrate. And because of that, because this inhibitor resembles the transition state much more than it does that actual substrate molecule, this will be a much more potent, much better inhibitor. In fact, this molecule here, the transition state analog, parole 2 carboxylic acid, binds 160 times more likely to the enzyme's active side, to the proline racemase active side, than the proline molecule itself. And so, if given a chance, this will be much more likely to bind into the active side than this substrate molecule, or this substrate molecule. Another example is shown on this side of the board. So the enzyme methylthioadenosine nucleosidase, uh, nucleosidase is basically the enzyme that catalyzes the hydrolysis of the bond between this carbon on the sugar molecule and this nitrogen on the base. And this reaction is known as deadenylation. So this enzyme catalyzes the deadenylation reaction, basically the breaking of this particular bond in this molecule. Molecule. And so, by the same argument, if we are able to build a molecule, a transition state analog that resembles the structure of the transition state in this reaction, in this deadenylation reaction, then we can build a very, very potent inhibitor to this enzyme. In fact, we can build this molecule that will act as a transition state analog. And notice, there is a great deal of similarity between this molecule and this transition state. Now, the final question that I want to discuss is what exactly is the usefulness of this transition state analog? So one usefulness is the ability to build a molecule that is a very good inhibitor to some particular type of enzyme. So for instance, if a bacterial cell, if a bacteria infects our body, then one way to inhibit the activity of that bacterial cell is to inhibit in some way some type of enzyme by using transition state analogs. Now, another important application of transition state analogs is the following. We can actually create antibodies that have specific cat uh, catalytic capabilities by using these transition state analogs. So we can now build antibodies with specific catalytic capabilities by using transition state analogs as antigens. And to demonstrate how this actually works, let's discuss the biosynthesis process, the biosynthesis of the heme groups. So remember, in proteins such as hemoglobin and myoglobin, we have these important prosthetic groups known as heme groups. And at the center of the heme group is the protoporphyrin ring. So the protoporphyrin ring basically is that organic part of that heme group that actually carries, that holds that iron atom. Now, in the process of the synthesis of this protoporphyrin ring of the heme group, the final step is to basically use a special enzyme known as ferrochelatase to basically catalyze the insertion of that Fe atom, the metal atom, into the center of the protoporphyrin ring. Now, normally, the protoporphyrin ring has a planar shape, so the shape of it is relatively planar. But to actually fit that Fe atom, the metal atom, into the center of that protoporphyrin, what this enzyme does, what the ferrochelatase does, 
is it basically bends the shape of that protoporphin ring and then that exposes the, uh, the electrons, the lone pair of electrons that can now bind that Fe atom. And so what the ferrocalitase does is it basically catalyzes the bending of that planar shape of the protoporphyrin molecule and that allows the fitting, that allows the insertion of that Fe atom into that heme group, into that protoporphyrin. Now how can we use this to basically build an antibody with a specific type of catalytic ability? Well, normally, the protoporphyrin has a planar shape. And we see that what this, what, what this enzyme does is it basically bends the, sh uh, bends the shape, and so the transition state of the protoporphyrin ring has to be bent in shape. So the transition state of the protoporphyrin basically has a bent shape. So that means if we can somehow build a transition state analog, that has the protoporphyrin with a bent shape, that means that type of molecule will be much more likely to bind into the active site of that particular enzyme, the ferrochelitase. So, in fact, what we can do is we can methylate one of the nitrogen atoms in that ring. And by methylating this nitrogen, that creates steric hindrance and that forces the bending of that protoporphyrin ring. And now that we have formed this transition state analog whose structure resembles the transition state structure in that particular uh, catalytic process, we can now expose, we can use this molecule, this transition state analog as an antigen, essentially expose it to a plasma cell. The plasma cell will in turn basically begin building antibodies that contain an active site that has a complementary structure to this this particular antigen. And so once we build that antibody, the antibody will be easily able to fit those protoporphyrin molecules into the antibody active side, and that antibody will in turn have the catalytic ability to basically transform or insert that Fe atom into the center ring of that particular protoporphyrin. So we see that transition state analogs are not only useful in actually inhibiting and blocking the ability uh, of enzymes to catalyze reactions, but we can also use these transition state analogs to actually build antibodies that have catalytic capabilities. And these antibodies are, co are commonly known as abzymes, where AB stands for antibody and the zyme part stands for the enzyme. So abzymes are these antibodies that contain catalytic capabilities that can basically catalyze different types of reactions. And the way that we build them is by using these transition state analogs as antigen molecules.